Hey there, welcome back again to Prairie Exotics. I'm Steve Rempel and this is Shar. Hi. <laughs> and uh, we're going to introduce you a couple more of our pets here, learn a little bit about what it takes to take care of them, and then uh, later on we'll jump to a creature feature and learn a little more in depth uh, care on some of these animals that we have here. Okay. Um, first one I'm going to bring up is one that we see <laughs> in the pet trade often and honestly bait. doesn't make a very good pet. Now you get married, right? <laughs> snake. Snakes are usually in the bags. Ah, uh, but no, this isn't a snake. Okay. I can see it wiggling around oh, down it's there. very active. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> like, this is Loki, and uh, Loki here is a Chinese water dragon. Okay. Uh, I will let you hold him right now because, as you can see, he's a little yeah. active. He likes to run and jump. Uh, it's pretty funny when he runs. He's got the back legs, so he usually likes to stand up and oh. give her like that. Uh, he's not the one that runs on the water. Okay. That's the basilisk or the Jesus Christ lizard. They've got little pockets between their toes. Okay. So they run fast enough. They actually like skip across the water. This guy can't do that. Um, the reason they don't make a great pet is uh, the bearded dragon we looked at yesterday. Yeah. They're very calm. You put them in their enclosure, they just sit there and relax. Mm -hmm. This guy is constantly going. He's back and forth, looking out the glass, rubbing his nose. And uh, we actually had one that came in from Thompson that was surrendered to a pet store out there because he rubbed his nose so bad it got infected and it led to mouth rot and they had no vets out there that could take care of oh him. So he flew in, we went to our vet, and sadly the vet said there's nothing we could do. Uh, he said, if we took a year of keeping it nice and dry and clean, it could start to heal back, but he's a water dragon. The moment you clean him up, dry him up, put some ointment on there, put him back in his cage, he jumps gonna go back in right water. in the water and loves to swim. So uh, unfortunately that guy had to be euthanized, but we got this one set up in a proper enclosure, and uh, no issues with the nose rub there. Very happy little lizard. Um, his owner had left him with us for, we do boarding, so taking care of animals when people need to travel or are moving in situations mm -hmm. like that. Uh, but after moving and getting settled, they decided they didn't want Loki anymore, so Aww. got stuck with us. Well, Loki, you have a good home now. Just calm little... down a little bit. You want to try holding no. him now? No. No, he seems okay. so active. I don't know. Is... Okay, I actually want to, I want to touch oh, him. Oh, touch him, yeah. Okay. Fuzz on me. Ooh, he's very soft. Right? And the scales are kind of pixelated, which it's got looks a little pretty spine, neat. too. Yeah, and then the tail helps them for swimming in the water, right? Um, and yeah. one of their defenses, which is really cool, is let's say they're hanging up in a tree and a predator comes and wants to attack them, and they're okay. over some water, like a river. They jump down into the river, and they just slow down their heart rate and their breathing. They can stay underwater for like 45 minutes oh. in just this trance. Uh, first time it happened to me, I had my little guy swimming in the bathtub, and I come in, and it's starfish not moving. I'm like, uh-oh. you okay? <laughs> Did I drown my lizard? I go and pick him up and he's sitting there like water's coming out of its mouth. All of a sudden, oh hey, how's it going? I'm like, <laughs> buddy, you just about gave me a heart attack, so, yeah. I wanna see those little feet though. Maybe the... Front ones? Yeah. They're little claws, because these guys like to climb up into trees. So they're somewhat arboreal. So they're pretty it's sharp, very, right? Yeah, they're very sharp, he's so cute. Yeah, no real weapon for swimming, but they use that tail for moving back and forth. All right, I'll put Kay. Loki back in his pillowcase. He's so active. <laughs> Now my next one's not gonna be too happy about coming out. Okay. He doesn't usually travel often, but he's very special. I wanted to. And your bird's show. talking to us over here. What do you want? <laughs> Hi, buddy. He wants okay. the attention. <laughs> so, oh my god! This is Winston. Now we'll see if Winston wants to come out. He looks like a cartoon character. Oh my goodness! Yeah, he uh, he likes to feel supported. Cute. So he's a veiled chameleon and he comes from Yemen. Okay. And if we look, he's got little mitten toes. There's like two claws on the one yeah. side, three on the other. That helps him holding on to his little branches or my fingers. Oh my. And when he walks, he'll have to walk forward and shake and then backwards. So he looks like a leaf kind of in the wind as he's moving along. And then he's got the prehensile tail, so he can actually use that to hang and wrap around extra as well. Amazing. Also, check out those eyes though, right? Yeah. So the turtle. Cool. So he can look two different ways. He's watching you and me at the same time. Where are you? And you know, he's not happy. Oh, is that what he does? does yeah, he puffing out his chin, trying to look threatening. So chameleons don't he's generally make cute, the best. Even when you're threatening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they don't make the best pet, especially for a beginner. Okay. Um, they need a high humidity, so you're constantly misting them. But with that, you don't want it to mold and get a respiratory infection. So you have to have good airflow in there. Um, and they don't typically, as we can see, like handling. Uh, some of the larger species, like maybe the panthers and mellers, might do a little bit better. Oh um, but also the life expectancy isn't always great. Uh, some of the little guys only live like two to three years. Okay. So when you're spending three to five hundred dollars on a lizard, lives a couple of years. It's and it's one you're just looking at. Oh. <laughs> you are so cute. You can see some of the colors yeah. are changing there too. Like, what hey are you guys. trying to reach up for? My finger? No. That's amazing. Go for it. 
So if you've seen the Telus commercials, you know, he's like grabbing the sunglasses and he's changing rapidly. That's just Photoshop. <laughs> That's not accurate. He's he not just, doing that? No, they can, they can change colors, but not quite to that level. Uh, oh, their tongue. Have you heard of their tongue? No, is it a colorful one? No, that's not the cool part. Their tongue is actually one and a half times the length of their body. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Is there any way we can get him to, no? Uh, like actually, food? maybe we can. not Let's see if he'll go for a worm. I can't guarantee it. Do you want me <laughs> to hold him or will he get upset? Well, no, he should be fine okay. right there. All right. I'm gonna see, where is he going? Maybe you might want to try and eat a little worm. Should we put him back here? Yeah, let me bring him more into the camera. Come here, little buddy. We're gonna try this over here. Oh. <laughs> He's pretty quick when he wants to move. There. Nope. Well, he's well fed. <laughs> well, and that's the thing is, we do keep him pretty well fed, so. And like I said, he doesn't come out too often, so he's not really like in, uh, not in food mode. But what he does, use his tongue. He shoots it out, and it's not even sticky. There's a muscle at the end. Mm -hmm. It like grabs around whatever it is and pulls it into their mouth. Interesting. And they'll eat like moth, other lizards, pretty much anything they can find and fit in their mouth. But apparently he does not want to have a no. little worm today. He has personality, for sure. Yeah, He's... not always a nice personality. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well I'm glad I didn't carry him. Yet. Okay, do you want to go back in now? This could be a little bit of a challenge, but we'll do our best. Okay. okay turn you around. Make sure you yeah, <laughs> so grumpy. Nope. Down there. Like there we go. Good job, bud. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, let's get someone a little more calm. Okay. This one. I see no wiggling in there. Nope, this one's pretty calm. Okay. This one is called a very beautiful Ooh. gray banded king snake. Let's hold this one. Okay. My hands over here. This one's good. Okay. So while I know I told you yesterday with the king snakes, they do tend to be a little more. Mm, oh chewable. <laughs> they like to chew on stuff. I'm more than just being snappy. This guy here is very calm. Okay. I've never had issues <laughs> with him. Okay. I think I'm going to give him back to you. You're giving back okay, now? Yeah. Not sure. But did you feel the scales feel a little bit different, right? Okay. They've got like a beaded scale, <coughs> which is a little different and a beautiful pattern. He's beautiful. Yeah, he's these guys like... are down found in the United States. And again, using See, that like tongue the to turn the bigger, so. the bigger the snake, I just, I guess it's like dogs, you know? The bigger the dog, I'm not scared. The little ones, it's the little ones that freak me out. The same thing I've even with spiders, like the big stuff just yeah. sitting there isn't so bad. They usually move pretty slow, but when you get the little tiny ones scurrying yeah, around, totally. it's, you know, not so much. Um, what else do we tell you about this guy? Where, where, sorry, where did you say he was from? Down in the United States. Oh, yeah. Okay. Usually in the desert area, trying to find a little road and stuff like that. That's why he's got the tongue around here. I'll see if he wants to. Get some slither action to see how they move around off the table. So they've got their belly scoots and those little things underneath their belly that we were touching yesterday that helps them move along. And he's like, I'm out. <laughs> oh my gosh, how is he not falling? Well, because they've got strength right to the tip of that tail. All muscles going all the way down. And you said, sorry, you said he was a king, the king. A king so does that mean well. he thinks that he eats? He eats other snakes Look as well. Look at that, that's my knowledge Good from job. you. Good <laughs> job, All right, let's take a moment and okay. go do a creature feature. We'll meet one of our animals and learn right. how to take care of them, and then we'll be right back. Sounds good. All right, thanks. <laughs> See you soon. All right, guys, welcome to this. Uh, Oh, and we already lost one. I was trying to say welcome to the creature feature. Uh, today's little feature is the gargoyle geckos. They're actually going to do another two-parter uh, with the crested geckos because they're very, very similar. This one's going to jump again. Yeah, maybe we'll just put that one back in its enclosure. Uh, gargoyles, I personally like a little bit more than the crested geckos as far as a beginner pet because they tend to be a little bit more calm even right out of the egg as a baby um, and their setup is really very easy. Um, let's look at a baby though here. This is actually from my friends at Winnipeg Reptiles. This is a fresh one. This is just born February 22nd, so not even a month old yet. And I'll show you just how small they are. And I hope this one doesn't prove me wrong that uh, they're really calm as babies because they typically are a little bit better. Look how tiny that one is. Oh, and it's gorgeous too. So here, I'm just gonna try and scoop them up gently. See, look at that. Now, if this was a baby crested gecko, and I've got two that we'll look at in a moment or two here, 
Um, the Crested Gecko would be ping, ping, ping all over the place, but these guys are generally a little bit calmer. Um, they get a little bit larger than the Crested Geckos, uh, but they do need a little bit more protein, so that would be bugs. Um, while the Crested Geckos like protein as a treat, um, they don't require it as much as the Gargoyle Geckos, but now with some of the new foods that include insect, like our Pegea mix here, um, you really don't need to worry about it if you don't want to deal with the with the bugs and chirping and whatnot. Um, from a setup standpoint, I mean, this is really all you need for a baby. Uh, for the first couple months, you can pick up one of these little critter keepers at Winnipeg Reptiles, paper towel on the bottom, fake plant, which you can get there as well. And then all you do, mix up a little food every two to three days. Now, the one thing people always are concerned with is my gecko is not eating. Anytime someone adopts one of these or calls us because they got one from a breeder, it's not eating. First thing you ask is, is there poop? Well, they're like, yeah, well, if there's poop, it's got to be eating. These guys eat nectars and sap and sweet fruits and things like that in the wild, so they're not eating a lot. So, honestly, a pop bottle cap, half full, they're going to lick it up just a little bit there, and you're not even probably going to notice. Um, when we have a bunch of geckos, they can clean out a bowl pretty quick. Um, for a larger setup, you can sort of gradually move them up from the little critter keeper to a nice exoterra. Now most exoterra tanks are double split, but with a smaller nano unit, it's actually just a single door. So obviously you want to add some decor like your fake plant and some vines. Uh, you can get up into the larger. Now this is about the minimum I would put an adult gargoyle gecko in. This is the 12 by 12 by 18 tall. Uh, this is the zoom ed, so it's a single door. Exoterra makes them as well in the double door. Um, but really, they are a bit bigger of a gecko and they're fairly active, so I would try to keep them in a uh, 18 by 18 by 24 tall if you can, if you have the space, it's a little bit better. Um, this one that they're in right now is an 18 by 36 by 30, nope, 24 tall, I believe. And what we've done is added a whole bunch of hiding spots, multiple levels, so that they're all calm, confident, um, and we don't have to worry about fighting. Um, there's one male in here, and the rest are all females, and they are producing. You can see someone's been digging a little hole. Uh, often we find the eggs in here, and we set them up. And on the nice thing is with gargoyle geckos, like crested geckos, they don't need any heat and any light. Now, we have the light on here. This is just visual light simply to brighten it up so people can see them. It's not just a dark tank. But being nocturnal, they're typically active at night, and they don't need any of that UVA, UVB, so you can skip all that light. And they don't need any heat. Room temperature, like low 70s, is perfectly fine. If you start getting into the mid 80s, these things will start to not do so well, like 85 and they'll die. Um, so you want to keep them a little bit on the cooler side. Um, but biggest thing with them is humidity. Unlike the uh, leopard gecko that likes it nice and dry, these guys were misting once or twice a day. Um, they do make automated misting systems from fairly affordable to some pretty fancy high-tech ones as well that can get it all misted for you regularly. Um, and you can also get a dripper. So let's say you're going away from Saturday to Sunday or just even a long weekend Monday. If you fed them before you left, get a little dripper that's dropping water into, like just from a pop oil into their water dish, that'll be fine to keep them going. Uh, when we mix up their food, I'll show you here, it's, it's kind of like putting powder essentially. It's just, uh, can you get a little look in there? So powder smells really fruity and lovely and I mean, they notice when I put it in there, like they all look as soon as the dish goes in and they poof, start to go to it. So we fill up a little dish. The nice thing is with these ledges, they're magnetic. So they just bang right onto the side, put your food in, take it out to wash, put it back. Um, for the substrate, again, we're using our cocoa fiber because they're misting. We don't want it to get um, moldy. So this holds the mold, or not the mold, but it holds the moisture and dries out fairly quickly without too many issues. Um, and then for the plants too, you can get really fancy or pretty, pretty basic. I mean, this is just your plastic pan. These ones are a little bit nicer because they use the magnets. You can use them to go from different spots and even some of these little guys here work out pretty well. So um, that's how we have our gargoyles set up. Um, I'll show you how we got the Cresty set up here in just one moment. All right, guys, and welcome back. Um, so we were just talking about the gargoyle geckos, and these are their cousins, the crested geckos. You can see they have little crest or eyelashes on there. That's really cute. Uh, this is my friend Peanut. And if you take a close look up those eyes, you'll notice no eyelids. And uh, like we said, studio, they actually lick their eyeballs with the little tongue that comes out because they can't blink and we'll notice too. Oh no, we're missing something. Now Peanut was born with a lovely long prehensile tail that she could use to hang from the trees and help her climb around and jump around, but uh, unfortunately they can lose their tails sometimes as early as right out of the egg and uh, then they're left with no more tail. It takes a while. Um, the really cool thing too with these guys, I, I can't remember if I mentioned it in studio, is that um, these guys actually live 
uh, or were thought to be, sorry, extinct up until 1994. So at this point, it's like 24 years ago, they thought that they were gone like the dinosaurs. But then they found out that they were just hiding really, really well. Uh, so they grabbed a bunch, sent them to the pet store, and they're actually one of the most popular pets in uh, North America. Here in Winnipeg, they used to be like hundreds and thousands of dollars, uh, but now they're down around like 35 to 50 dollars, give or take, uh, for more of the basics. I mean, you can get into some pretty fancy colors and patterns again where you're spending a couple hundred dollars, but for the basic gecko pet that you're going to be getting for your kids, you're looking to spend about 50 dollars. So their setup is very similar to how we have uh, our gargoyles set up. Um, they tend to be in a little bit smaller of an enclosure. So this was that 12 by 12 by 24, or sorry, sorry, 18 by 18 by 24 that we were talking about. So this would be sort of a, a minimum for a single set of uh, geckos there. As far as keeping geckos together, they're typically solitary animals. Um, two females that are grown up together can live together. Um, two males that grow up together will often be okay. Um, if it ends up being a male and female, well, Regardless of if they're brother or sister, they're going to try and do stuff, so you don't want that happening. Um, and interesting two males at a later point is not a good idea. So keeping them solitary is usually your best bet. Um, you can see we've got his little dish here that we use to set up for this food. Keep water down there, and again, it's his misting once or twice a day. Um, the light on there is just visual to make it look a little bit sharper when we have people visiting, um, but they don't require any light, any heat, so they're pretty easy. But let's take a look at the baby. Again, this one, these are from my friend Jenny at Jenny's Terrarium because uh, we don't really breed a whole lot. So I wanted just to show you some of the babies because this is often what people are picking up as pets. So look, like I said, right out of the egg already, a tailless little one, nice chocolatey brown. I th don't hold me to it, but that might be like a buckskin. But I'll turn around so you can see a little bit better on this way. There, and that's what the tail would normally look like. And it kind of looks like a bird poop stain because when they're hanging out on the tree and that tail's coming down, it actually kind of looks like poop on the tree and it helps them camouflage pretty well. Um, I'm going to go with the one without a tail because I don't want to lose Jenny's gecko's tail. Oh, and see, this one's going to be calm. Look at that. Oh, I'm going to go for a jump already. See, see, our gargoyle just sat nice and chill, but our, our Cresty's already jumping. So with little, oh yeah, there we go. There we go. Now we got a moving Cresty. So you can see how with a little kid, um, this one might not be as great right out. Um, once they grow up a little bit like a juvenile, they can be calmed down a little bit more. Um, but that's where the gargoyle is really a little bit <laughs> calmer. So uh, you know what? We'll leave these guys alone. They are pretty cute, though. Um, and you know what? Since we're right here, I'm just going to move my table. We'll take a quick moment to do that. And I'm going to show you the tokes because the tokes are really cool. And uh, they were actually on set uh, for the whole studio's filming that we did for our show. So hold on one sec. All right, so let's see what's going to happen if we poke them here a little bit. Are you going to give us a toki toki bark? No? How about you? Okay, I think I'm going to have to go in with my hand. That'll work <laughs> every time. So it is trying to bite, but it's more of a bark. Oh, there we, there we got a bite. Now these guys are known to be kind of the pit bulls of... Uh, geckos are pretty large they're from indonesia asia they've made their way to florida now running around in the everglades and uh, as you can see they're quite robust little geckos and uh, when they bite they often will have their eyeballs go right to the head and they hold on for a long time but luckily my guys are a little bit more calm if you're lucky to get one of these guys as a captive born and bred baby and you handle it from young they are known to be actually somewhat sociable um, but most of the ones you're finding on the market at the pet stores and expos are what's called wild caught because there's not a whole lot of market to the people that are breeding these because the morphs aren't working out the same way so they're not making as much on them so a lot of them are wild caught because it's easier for people to go and buy them and pull them out of the bushes and that kind of stuff right so um, they don't always have the best attitude but they are pretty cool and look, neat looking. Here, we'll go for one more bark. Oh, that was a good one. One more. Oh, really got on there. Okay, <laughs> that's enough. We'll leave you guys alone. I do handle them sometimes for presentations, but it's fun to show kids because not a lot of people realize that they can bark. It's pretty neat. All right, thanks for tuning in to the creature feature, you guys. Uh, we got, I think, one more coming up, and then we'll be good to go. Hey guys, and welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that creature feature. It's kind of a neat little animal to learn about. Um, so we got a couple more here. Let's do something fuzzy. And this one's not okay. scared. It's actually cute, not okay. eight-legged or anything. This is my friend Sam. I think I bumped Sam. this guy. 
with my knee, so. Oh, that's okay. We got Sam and Frodo, but I didn't have room to bring both of them. Oh. And Sam and Frodo here are guinea pigs. Hi, buddy. And guinea pigs are pretty popular pets, actually. Uh, they live like, what, I think six to seven years, give yeah. or take. Eat lots of hay, some veggies, salads. Uh, give them a little wheel to run in, a little hut. Very similar setup to how we had our hedgehog here mm -hmm. yesterday. Oh, he's so cute. They're super cute, yeah. The only thing you got to be careful with these guys, though, is uh, making sure that you trim their nails, because their nails do get quite long, and if not taken care of, they can actually grow into them themselves, which Aww. is not very good. So you got to be grooming that. And because my little buddy's got a little long fur, I have to make sure he doesn't get uh, poop balls stuck here at the back, because so. <laughs> it does happen, unfortunately. Do you want to try holding him, though? Or he might make <laughs> you really fuzzy. That's the only other thing. No, no, that doesn't bother me. <laughs> Yeah, just hold his front legs and his back legs there, kind of like that. All right, I've never held a guinea pig before. I saw that cute little video of them when they're eating and the one snatches yep. the food from the other. Yeah, Brussels and sprouts. And they get Brussels like, they have such a personality in their in their faces. Hi. Yeah, and they do this thing called popcorn so when they're happy you. that they like just jump and like dance in one little spot and make all these little like I'm funny sounds. Down. Yeah, go down. Okay, because I feel like I'm awkward holding them. He won't it's jump okay. anywhere though. Isn't he cute though? So these guys make pretty good pets. They are actually up during the day, so they're not nocturnal in a wheel, keeping your kids up all oh, okay. at night. And uh, yeah, Bye. socially, you can let them run around the house. They're not going to chew on stuff too much. They're not like the bunny rabbits in that regard. You, you can let it run around your house? Mm -hmm. um, can it be litter trained? Yeah. Well, there's some people who have had some luck, so I won't say no, but I okay. haven't had luck. They kind of go everywhere. Like and they do poop cat. quite a bit. Oh, you're a little yeah. bit of a pooper. Yeah. All right. They like to have all their little naps quite regularly, but they're cute and good little pets, eh? Yeah, they're super cute. Yeah. All right, let's put you back in here. A little stinker. Now, we am going to grab a gecko we got over here behind us. These guys are hiding here, and they hide really, really well because they're called mossy prehensile tailed geckos, and they come from New Caledonia as well. Bert, come here. Now, these ones might be a little more jumpy. Let's see. Yep. Yeah, he's coming right out. And on the floor. Well, that was fun. Luckily, these guys can't jump and hit the floor because they're jumping geckos. They're arboreal, so they're up in the trees. They're falling. They yeah, they got sticky toes. So you can feel the tail. <laughs> so on my white arm and outfit, he stands out pretty easily. He'd be yeah. Easy to spot. But in the wild, on bark. He's so fast. <laughs> on the brown, he'd really hide well. And he's one of the two guys, that the other geckos that can hang right by oh his tail. Oh my gosh. And has to lick the eyeballs. With that cute little tongue, look at that. <laughs> so these guys make good pets too. No he's special not even heat. He's getting his eyeballs. No or special he just, it's just like a long. No, he's just looking at his nose there. Oh, okay. It can come all the way up. It's yeah. like a long one. Okay. But in addition to no heat, no lights, they eat just a little fruit smoothie. You can do bugs once or twice a week for a snack if you really want to. Um, they live for like 15 to 20 years. Only well, thing oh, is, these guys are a little more on the pricey uh, side. They're about $300, give or take, here in Winnipeg, compared to like the gargoyle geckos, it's $150 or even $50 for the crested gecko. So if you want something a little bit different, you can look at these guys, but the care is really, really quite similar. Their toes are really cool. Yeah. And they've got little hairs on. on there, and that's how they hold on to the glass. And you'll see, even with a claw, they, they curl little... up their toes so that they're not scratching. Do you want to try holding it? I'll aim it to okay, me. Okay, so, so it, how do we, oh, maybe I'll do that. Okay. Yeah, it should jump towards me at least this way. It'll, oh, jump, okay. Yeah, good. we'll see. There you go. Oh, okay, that was really cute, actually. See? Aren't you adorable? He's very soft, and yes, right. he doesn't. Can I try doesn't one more touch. Okay, I'm gonna, can I put him this way? I'm, yeah. And I won't scream, um, which seems like it'd be surprising, since. See, that's exactly how you do it, when you're yeah. handling them, one hand in front of the other. Oh, so that's how we teach the soft. kids, just to keep them moving. Look at that, see? Good job. <laughs> see, we haven't jump over again. You can do it. You can do it. Three, two, one. We have two, to give him some one. encouragement. Uh, touch him in the bum. Here we go. Come on, buddy. Yeah, he's got he some just, stage fright. He just really likes me, that's yeah, all. Yeah, a nice warm hand. <laughs> jump! There we go. <laughs> now you're taking too long. Okay. Okay, well, let's see if he'll stick to the, I'll show you how he sticks to the glass. Okay. As long as he doesn't, like, go bolting out of here. There you go. <laughs> was he the ones that we were staring at yesterday? No, I just brought these guys actually today. He oh, wasn't okay. here. We had the gargoyles in here yesterday. We switched them out for their cousins here, the Chihuahuas. See, look at that. You can just hang nice. right on the front of the glass. Okay. Isn't that cool? Right on. Um, I brought another tortoise here to show you because this guy's okay. kind of cool. Uh, this one's very similar to the little Herman's tortoise that we mm -hmm. looked at yesterday. This one's called a Greek tortoise. So this is actually full size too. Okay. So for people, again, wanting to look at getting a turtle, 
Stay away from the aquatic turtles. Uh, I actually brought a couple we can learn about here in a little bit. Um, probably one of our other shows, we've got actual soft shell turtle and one of the sliders, which is one of the popular ones. And we'll talk about what makes them terrible pets. Okay. Uh, but this guy's good. Lives 75 to 100 years, just like our other little tortoises. This one's He's, not overweight? Nope, this guy is perfectly <laughs> in, sh in shape. His little head goes in, yeah. he uses his feet to close the door. And look how protected he is in there. Oh yeah, very. So you can hold him nice and safe. So no one's gonna get him and then wakes up, oh hey, how's it going? <laughs> So when they go to sleep, they, they all, they all yeah, shove right in there, go to bed, have their little nap. His shell again is made the same stuff as our fingernails and our hair. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's pretty cute. So these guys are herbivores, so no bugs, no meat, no nothing, just straight grasses and salads and stuff like that. So we have Timothy hay mixed with some alfalfa hay, and then romaine, red leaf, green leaf, all that kind of stuff. He's fast. He's motoring. Oh. Yeah. Leaving behind a mess <laughs> of stuff. <laughs> Got a little bit of a cleaner. All right, well, let's uh, <laughs> put that down over here. And uh, maybe we'll put our stinky little fry. I thought All something right. smelt a little, a little <laughs> off. I'm, I'm not going to have you hold this <laughs> one because, yeah. You've got it everywhere. It's and a break to wash his hands. <laughs> well, I got one more I'll get through, then okay. we'll, then we'll right. head to the bathroom and clean up. <laughs> no I touching. Think that needs, yeah, no, we're all good. So this is Houdini. Okay. And. Houdini's pretty awesome, <laughs> and I really hope that's water. Oh, no! <laughs> I really hope that's all water. I don't think it smells like water. <laughs> we'll put that lid back on. This <laughs> reminds me of the one you showed me yesterday. Yeah. Um, oh, this is... So a lot of animals, when you take them out of their home, they go to the bathroom. Okay. Um, for one, it makes them feel safe because it's their smell and yeah. stuff like that. Um, in a lot of cases, too, with the tortoises, I explained it to the kids. Um, imagine the kid wasn't potty trained, has an accident in bed, goes to school, comes home, mom didn't clean the bed. The kids don't want to climb into like a dirty bed. That's disgusting. Tortoises and many of the other animals are kind of the same way. They don't want to poop in their home and have it dirty. So they'll actually wait till I take them out. I've had the little tortoise, like I go from the back of our facility to the birthday room to do a party. It's like 10 minutes in his box and he's already unloaded. Oh no. Yeah, if I don't take them out of their enclosure for a couple days, they'll actually climb into their water dish or their like food bowl and go to the bathroom there. Cause, Cause they, they know Steve don't. has to clean it cause he can't have dirty water and food. So <laughs> they're pretty smart. There so, we go, they've um, got a system down. Yeah, but Houdini here, She's an Argentine tegu, a uh, black and white tegu. Okay. Um, she's one other one that you would not be able to have as a pet in Winnipeg. We had her before they changed the bylaw in 2014, so she's uh, got a permit for her. She's grandfathered. Uh, a tegu is kind of like a modern lizard, like everyone's familiar with the big Komodo dragons, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a smaller version of that. Um, it's an opportunistic feeder, and it eats everything. Okay. So being an opportunistic feeder, that means she eats whenever there's an opportunity. Yeah. So, and she will gorge herself and eat as much as possible. So when we have dogs as pets and we have them go with a bowl, we're like, oh, you're hungry, we want to feed you. And then when they're done, they're done, right? Yeah. Not her. She's going to keep eating. Get just fat. Most dogs. Most dogs. <laughs> no, I know. There are some that <laughs> will keep eating. But uh, with her, she will just get super fat and lethargic. So we only feed her usually three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Or if we have parties going on the weekend, we'll save it for that. But she can eat full mice, chicken, drumsticks, uh, baby Dale chicks, <laughs> fish, shrimp, eggs. The chicken pickers? Yep. <laughs> the chicken pickers and Donnie Pretty much. Um, I'll see. Do does, she, does she move fast or is she slow? If like, kind food of like is turtle? around and she needs to get going, she can okay. be on her Just because I was going to touch the back of the table. Tail, oh, yeah, but. Go. Give her a cup. She's got beaded scales too. If they get a nice shot of it here, which is cool. Oh, I'll show you. I brought so actually. Terrifying. When they shed their skin, this is actually from her head. They shed it in pieces, and you can see like just exactly how beaded that is. Oh my gosh! Right, and this was from her leg. It's like a little sock. Yeah, but that's what they do. It's always in pieces. They're not like a snake that's gonna come all the way at once. And I did bring a snake skin to show you later that okay. shows how that all works. Um, let's see if Houdini maybe wants to have a snack. Do you wanna have a snack? Just like any time, I'm an opportunist. So these are dead Aren't, mice. Okay, <laughs> They Lovely. buy them from our friends at Winnipeg Reptiles. We buy them in the bag. Like I said, the chicken fingers are frozen in a little pack. Okay. And then we'll see. So she'll smell it with her tongue. And she's got the split tongue. So you can smell left and right, just like the snakes do. Oh, you getting a little taste? You can be shy in front of the camera. What? Is it too early in the morning? She usually eats after lunch. Come on, I wanna see this. <laughs> well, 
If she won't eat it, I have an idea of someone who might. <laughs> then I won't either. <laughs> My friend Prince Charming over here. Okay. Is a pixie him. frog or an African <laughs> bullfrog. Yes, woo! And uh, see if you, oh, almost. One more time. I want to watch. Oh, now he's like, no, I don't want it. He'll eat that entire thing. Yeah, usually one big bite. No. But now he's being grumpy. Why does no one want to eat? All right, we might have to come back to that later. <laughs> we don't want to bother waving him. a dead mouse around. Well, <laughs> my apologies. Here, we'll just put it back in this container. We don't typically feed animals when we're out and about because it's not their home. They feel more comfortable to eat at home, especially yeah. with snakes. Um, if you're handling a snake after you've fed it, um, they can often regurgitate it because they want to be lighter, faster, and then they figure if they give up their food, they might be left alone. So it's kind of like us when we eat a big meal, you don't want to go swimming right away. You can cramp up and not feel so good. Yeah. Same thing with our snakes, but usually the garburator here will eat pretty much <laughs> anything. All right, well, that's the last one that we'll to learn about right today. Oh, yeah, yeah, feel it before you go. But just, okay. Yeah, go for it. Oh my gosh. Right? And she's a burrower, so she's got big sharp claws for getting down into a deep enclosure. And that's the other thing. She eats a lot, which gets expensive. Her enclosure is at least a four by eight foot by four foot enclosure with like two feet of dirt so she can dig down. So you need a lot of space. And you get the people like, oh, I'll just give it a room. Well, you don't want to have two feet of dirt in your bedroom. Yeah. And high humidity, which she needs, is going to wreck your walls. So it's just a bad thing all around. So you need a very special large enclosure for her friend. But looks like she's done wants to go back into her box. So okay. thank you guys all for checking us out. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the show. And we'll be back with some more animals later. Bye, guys. I see ya.